Hello, welcome back to video 4 in music theory for leisure time singers who just want a little more technical know-how and maybe a 10 minute distraction for the day. In this video we'll be looking at some essential performance directions and no, I don't just mean forwards. Additional performance directions beyond the notes and the lyrics on and around the stave can be taken from some additional text that surround the stave, which should be written in distinctive fonts in order to differentiate them from lyrics, and there are a handful of symbols it's really useful to learn for when you come to work through a new score. Dynamics is how loud or how soft you should make your performance. These instructions come in the form of sudden fixed transitions from one dynamic to another. The letter F, written in this sort of bold italic font, means loud. On the other side, this P means soft. Why F and P, you ask? Italian words, forte and piano. Forte being loud, piano being soft. Add more Fs and we get louder, more Ps and we get softer. So think of it as a spectrum. Generally speaking, going from two Fs at one end of the spectrum to two Ps at the other give the performer enough scope to adequately structure a performance with enough dynamic light and shade. Add to the mixture, we can include the letter M to these letters and we get even more middle ground, M standing for mezzo, which means half. There's plenty of degrees to consider here. So, to make it easier to remember, F. For goodness sake, give me some more volume. Or P, please be quiet. Let's look at an example. Let's say a piece of music begins with the dynamic marking PP, or pianissimo, very soft, and then moves on to FF, or fortissimo, then later to P, and then to F, piano and forte. We know we should start at the quietest level right at the beginning and end loud, but not quite as loud as the second section. Consider dynamics are relative within a piece of music. What is P, P, pianissimo in one piece may not be in another. But within that piece of music, or that one performance, it might be the quietest moment of the music, and that's what the marking is intended to communicate. Say if a piece starts P, P, and then later in the piece it says P, 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 very soft and then softer. It happens. And so the beginning needs to be very soft and the softer part still needs to be audible. Worth thinking about as a performer in a choir, but it's the conductor's job to take a broader view of all these things and get the ensemble as a whole to work to the correct volume. Next, we have gradual changes in volume. These are illustrated by these symbols shown here where we move gradually from a softer dynamic to a louder and then back to a softer, and these can work in any way we like. In this example, we start soft and we get louder, but we get there gradually, no sudden changes here. As a singer, this can sometimes happen on one note. Here we start soft and get very loud all on one note, and then get softer again. This can be a magical effect when managed properly across the entire choir. Tempo indications come in two varieties. We have words. These can be in any language, but older works tend to use Italian terms. Here are an example of a few, and some English equivalents, which you're probably more likely to come across in newer scores. The other variety consists of these metronome marks. These are very precise numbers that tell us how many beats there should be within one minute. So 60, there will be a beat every second and a higher number fits more beats into the same amount of time. Expression marks in the music give you more of an impression of what the composer would like to communicate with a particular phrase. We can identify these by a light italic font, and these instructions most commonly appear below the staves they apply to, or between two staves when using the condensed form of showing choral music. Dolce here means sweetly. But there are many terms that we probably want to get a bit familiar with, but too many to go into now. So if you fancy doing your research, or ask your musical director, and I'm sure they'll more than happily tell you what it means. Articulation is how we might sound the note, how we might articulate it, if you like. 
these dots, not to be confused with these dots at the side which elongate a note, these dots instruct you to leave a gap of silence between each note. This form of articulation is called staccato. These lines above or below the note ask you to hold on to the note in a way that draws attention to that note. As a starting point, think about the way you would hold on to a syllable in speech if you wanted to accentuate a point, like really accentuate it. No, really accentuate it. This is called tenuto. These little sideways V dudes are called accents. Not like a regional accent, but the kind that makes you attack the start of a note more strongly. This would call for a stronger transient at the start of the note. Another form of accent is this symbol. If the two appear in a piece, you would have to consider how you would differentiate between the two. But for now, it's enough to treat them similarly. It's a conductor's job to communicate what they want from these. It's your job to remember. These curvy boys ask you to make all the notes within them smooth, like properly connected together with no breaks. No surprise that these can be a great way to indicate where the breath should lie outside of these. They are called slurs. Not to be confused with the kind of slurs and slurring you hear Kevin from Kirby coming out with halfway through his six day drinking session. These are nice slurs. And also not to be confused with these who do a similar job but because these are connected to an adjacent note on the same pitch, it acts as a tie. You wouldn't re-articulate this note because it's joined to the one before, which leads us back to rhythms again. So let's explore some more rhythms. These examples all take place in 4-4 four, four time, which means that one of these, a quarter note or crotchet, lasts for one beat. This means the first note in this example lasts for four beats. Let's hear how that sounds. Now the second bar contains two half notes. In 4-4 four, four time, this means each note lasts for two beats. The third bar contains four quarter notes or four crotchets. The fourth bar contains eight eighth notes or quavers. You'll notice a few things. Each bar adds up to four beats. Each bar contains more notes, and the more complex the note looks, the faster it is. I particularly want to pay attention to the fact that each bar contains the same amount of time, even though they contain different amounts of notes. So let's take this phrase, also in 4-4 four, four time. We have a four beat note, followed by four one beat notes, followed by one three beat note before the example cuts off. But say we want the first note to last for five beats, how would we write that? We would have to use a tie, because remember, we can't have more than four beats in each bar. The tie crosses the bar line and joins the first of the crotchets in the following bar and makes it part of the first note. Now for this example to make sense, we can't have the extra word in there. As we are joining the two notes together, we only need one syllable, in this case the word sing. We would now hold the vowel contained within the word sing for five beats surrounding the consonants before and after. Let's complete this example by adding this line. Looks a little more obvious now what we have to do, I hope. We finish the example with a three beat note, a dotted minim. Remember a dot extends the note by half its original length, so as a minim is two beats in this example, two plus half of two, which is one, equals three. So that's why a dotted minim in this example lasts for three beats. So we could also write this out using a tie, a two beat note tied to a one beat note. These two examples would sound identical. Now you ask, why have two ways to write out the same thing? Well, let's imagine this note didn't start on beat one of the bar, but on beat three, and we still want it to last for three beats. We would now have to use a tie to make it last for the same amount of time. 
And that brings us to the end of video number four. Hooray! We're now this percent done with music theory. Next week we'll revisit our good old friend Rhythm, let's hope we can all find it. If you like this video leave an F in the comments to let me know, and if you didn't like it, which I'm sure isn't the case, leave a little P. See you next week and we'll get funky with some epic rhythms.